Welcome back, it's me Lou. So initially the Skullgrin drawing was going to be a one part video where it was just straight through. But there was a small little break in the drawing if you watched it. Um, I kind of wasn't sure halfway through what I was going to do with the drawing as I finished the pencil portion of it. And, um, you know, I still have the toy with me here. You know, here's Mr. Skullgrin. Rawr! So I took a break. Um, cause I, it's like I said in the video, I needed fresh eyes on it. After I did the pencil drawing, I didn't know uh, what I was going to do with it. If I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to color it or how I was going to approach it with, um, you know, ink and, or whatever. So I just, you know, stopped the video there and I was hoping to like, you know, finish the video and then tack that part on and just have one long video. But as it turns out, the video is too long. It's, <laughs> it's good. At that point, it'd be like, I don't know, almost two hours. And I'm like, it would take forever to upload a file that large. So I'm just going to break it up into two separate parts. So this is part dos of the Skullgren drawing. So um yeah sit back relax uh listen to me <laughs> blather for over an hour while i finish that drawing and uh thanks for stopping by all right talk to you later check out this video and we're back okay so i took a break for a little bit um it was actually <laughs> more like i think like 10 or 12 hours so after i was done um drawing this the first time around and i said i was gonna take a break um my computer said it needed to run an update, and that's Windows 10. And then I ran an update, and then it messed up my computer. So then I had to rebuild and reinstall my PC, which was kind of a pain in the butt. And I had issues with it up until this morning, but things are cleared away, and I have everything running back to normal. So we're going to come back to this guy. And I think I have an idea of how I want to render him out. Um, I... I think for the most part, I'm going to try to use some finer line work where I can. And um, we'll just kind of go from there. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I have a pencil. And I'm just going to try to find and figure out how, uh, how I'm going to mark off where the shadows are and where some of the details are. Just so when I come back with a marker, it'll be easier for me to uh, figure it out as opposed to just making it up as I go along. Uh, so right now I'm just like segmenting the horns at the top. This Trying to get an idea of where I want the breaks in the horn. Um, so if I'm going to cast a light from the bottom here, so this guy has solid eyes, even though he's a skull, it's not like his eyes recess into the void. So I think I'm going to try to plan to maybe having a highlight down here at the bottom. No, that doesn't look right. The hard thing with eyes like this is that there's no pupils. So if I had a highlight, it could be easily mistaken for pupils unless I do the highlight in the right area, which I'm not sure if I'm going to do. It's not looking... Doesn't seem it's gonna work for me, so I'll just try to f try to figure out how to at least add some sort of gleam to his eye. No, that's not working either. All right, let's go. We'll, we'll give that some some thought. Let's just figure out his nose for now. Okay, I think I have, I have an idea of how I want to do his eye. I think. Alright, this guy has a tongue, I think. We'll add that inside. Figure that out. F figure out where his teeth connect to his skull. So this is a skull, so it's not like he's going to have a gum line. So i got to remember that. I don't want to mess that up. This horn's gonna be lit from the bottom, so we'll plan for that. Same for the top of his skull. And while I'm at it, I should figure out if I'm gonna add any sort of like 
details or like texture to his his skull just so when I add the shadows in it's just not completely smooth it'll give it a sense of texture and surface all right so I kind of see that His texture on his skin kind of has a lot of wrinkles and folds. So it's one of those things where I'm not going to necessarily plan it out completely. But I, 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 would, I do want to give myself some sort of idea of where things are going to be placed. Now, unlike this toy, I might actually give this guy a little bit of sense of musculature. Just to break up his body a little, because if I don't, I'm kind of worried that this will blend in with the rest of his lower torso. And I'm going to save uh, his hands for last. I'll figure that part of the puzzle out later. Because I want his hands to have a little bit more pop. So I'll come back to that after I render out the rest of the body. Okay, this, so this is what I'm kind of seeing right now. Alright, that probably looks like gibberish, but it, I could kind of see it in my head. And let's start off working on this. All right, I think I'm going to start with his face first. Because I think those details will be the easiest for me to flesh out and get out of the way. Alright, there's that. I think I like this. I'm not 100% sure yet. It's kind of working for me. The eye. So I'm going to try to recreate that effect on the other eye. Okay, um, let's work on his mouth here. If I, I think if I could darken in parts of his mouth, the teeth will start to form itself and uh, the rest of the face should follow. Because right now I just need to figure out where my uh, points of contrast are and what needs um, highlighting, separation, how to create layers and give this guy some depth. Because right now everything is just kind of very uniform. And I need to break things up right now. Yeah, so this, I think 
what I'm doing right now is just going to set the tone for the rest of the drawing and how I see um, how this guy's going to be rendered out. I have to figure out how I'm going to differentiate the textures also. So the texturing I'm kind of using for the teeth is going to look a little bit different than what I might use per se on like his um, armor or his, some of his torso bits. Okay, this I'm liking this so far. I like the direction I'm going. And now I gotta figure out his teeth. I'm gonna make some of these lines a little bit these points a little bit finer. So it's not as blunt edged where the teeth meet. And let's try to create this effect on the teeth, but in a little bit smaller detail. Okay, it's coming along. It's a little bit s slower than I would have liked, but I think this is working out. It's like I said in the past. Sometimes for me, I don't I don't necessarily see the drawing completely in my head. It doesn't really take form, and until I actually start putting the pen or pencil to the paper. And then once I start fleshing it out more, it starts to make a little bit more sense to me. It's a weird way of working because it's like a gamble because, you know, I'll make mistakes sometime. And I would say, you know, just commit to your mistakes. But I think when I was younger, I'd, I'd, I'd use the same approach and I'd just completely mess up a composition. So somewhere in my, in my box of like old drawings, there's just a lot of half finished pieces because I'd, I'd take this approach and, you know, maybe halfway through I'd make a mistake or... It wasn't working out the way I kind of hoped. And then, uh, you know, I just abandoned the project altogether. All right, this is kind of working for me. I got to figure out how I'm going to do the skull bits. Now, I know I want to add texture to this, so I think I'm going to do that first. Let's, let's add some of these cracks that I was talking about earlier. Maybe he has um, some lumps around his head. Just little little pieces that'll give him a little bit more character. And also at the same time, keeping in mind, you know, where these shadows and textures and crevices and all this other kind of surface detail is going to fall in place. Yeah, so I'm trying to create texture here. And I'm actually using a different brush too than I was using before. I mean, a uh, different marker. I didn't. I ran out of... Um, all my Sharpies are kind of 
ran raw and they're all like blunt tip tip now so this is actually uh i think like an overhead projector marker for like i think um those clear acetate sheets but the, the point's nice and sharp so we'll use this and run it till it's raw If I had the time, I'd love to just do this in, with a with like maybe like a sable brush, but that's not gonna happen. Maybe in another video. I was looking at the toy after I uh, did the early preliminary sketch. And I kind of realized I left off, he had these spikes on his knuckles, but I forgot to draw them in. And at this point, it's too late to go back because, you know, I can't erase here. I mean, I could add knuckles, pointed knuckles here if I wanted to, but not here. And let's work on this a little. Okay, from here I'm going to start, uh, let's add some detail and some shading to this. I kind of have my reservations about how this drawing is going to turn out because the initial, the gesture is good, I think it's decent. It can use some more work, but for the sake of this video, I think it works okay. But actually finishing the rendering right now, I'm kind of worried about. Just because of the difference in the, the textures here, I, I got to make sure that whatever I do here, I do, you know, it, the head the head needs some pop to it. I don't want it to, like, blend in with the rest of his torso. So I might make some adjustments later in terms of the, the contour, contour lines and maybe make the... Um, the line weight a little heavier, like I've done in the past. Now, one thing I think I could do to different, because I want to differentiate right now the the texture between the skull, the 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 horns, the tusks, the teeth. Um, you know, so I want to make the skull stand out a little bit different than this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I might add some feathering at the top. just to break it up a little. Um, it's working okay. I'm going to come back in later with a finer point and uh, bring in a little bit more shading. I'll do that right now. So what I'm kind of thinking is maybe some lighter shading. Okay, this is kind of working. I, just ha I think I just have to be careful of um, how... I don't want to get too carried away. I mean, it's easy to get carried away right now, but... I'm going to make sure the distance between the lines here don't close in too tight, because then I think it'll change the texture of the skull. But I still want to leave the impression that the light source is coming from under here, so... Right now, I'm kind of, uh, I think I'm running the risk of, yeah, this is kind of starting to render out the same way as the teeth and the tusks. So I might just, everything just might kind of blend together. 
I kind of didn't want that, but I think that's what's happening right now. That's all right. I think I can still make this drawing work. I'm very tempted to draw, I know I say this all the time, but I'm very tempted to actually do this one digitally in color just because his color scheme, it's really bright and I really like it a lot and I'd like to see this drawing fleshed out more and see how it would look if I added the grays and the, I think like the deeper hot pink or is that a more of a magenta? I think I got a little carried away with some of the rendering on his, on his head. But I'm just trying to figure out the textures right now. It's kind of difficult. But I think I could salvage it once I start rendering out his body. Because I could pr create more contrast. I might make this, his body a little bit darker than what it's supposed to be. And I think that'll make the head pop a little bit more. But it's kind of working right now. I could kind of make heads and heads and tails of what everything is. Maybe if I, um, I'm kind of thinking I should maybe bring this line here down. And yeah, that kind of changes things a little, just a little. What about with the teeth? Could I mess around with the teeth at all? Just kind of break up the uniformity of this contour line around the teeth. Give it some high points, some accents and some low points. Okay, that's kind of working for me. Let's work on Let's work on these giant horns. And I think I want to give the horns a similar texture to these giant tusks on the side. So let's see if I could pull that off. I 
One thing I've been taught in drawing, and I've heard other artists say this before, is sometimes when you're working, you don't always want to... I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of this all the time. You don't want to focus on this one spot. It's sometimes nice to jump around just so I think visually you start creating a sense of balance and, don't, and you, don't, you don't end up overworking one spot. So you don't want to give uh, too much weight or attention to one area and create an imbalance in the drawing. So it helps to move around. So what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm just going back and forth between the, the horns. So as I'm continuing to adding more texture and detail on one side, I'll jump to the other side. And I think that for me that helps gives it some sort of balance. I don't want one horn to detract from the other. I kind of want them to look equally um, the same and command the same amount of attention. That's looking okay. Um, let's add a little bit more shadow to it towards the top. Okay, that's looking a little decent. Okay, let's start working on his, his torso up here. Now, I kind of have a different idea of what I want to do for it. I think I want to go with more heavier blacks on this. Um, just because I really want to break this up. I need to separate the head from the rest. If I was working in color, I think I wouldn't be as concerned because I... You know, I can just assign colors and they'll break, they'll just naturally create contrast. But when you're working in black and white, it doesn't always work that way. So uh, let's figure out how we're going to do this. Okay, so he's going to be lit from the bottom. I want to make, maybe I want to give his torso maybe a 70 30 black and white contrast. I think that'll work for what I want to achieve. All right, so when I do this kind of thing, I'm just drawing out, I'm just blacking out where I think the concentrated parts of black are going to be. And in my head, I always kind of think of it as like I'm just 
It's almost like drawing continents on a globe. You know, here's the peninsula, here's the larger land masses. I'm trying to figure out now if I want to... Now, I know the light's coming from underneath, but part of me is wondering if his back should be partly rimlit. Just to break it up a little. Um, am I doing this right? Black? Wait, shit, I messed up, I think. Right, this is going to be black. This is going to be black. This is going to be black. No, I might have messed up. Okay, that's all right. All right, let's start filling some of this out. And I think once I get fill this, these black areas out and add a little bit more defined areas of shading to it, the head will start popping out more from the torso. And then you'll you'll get, you'll have a better idea where I'm going with this drawing. This is a black and white drawing, so for me, it's like I like having a lot of well-defined areas of black and white. If I was working in color, I'd be a little bit more open and have more room for um, adding color and, you know, using color as a tool to give it some volume and mass. But right now, working in black and white, I'm just relying on, you know, cross-hatching, stippling, and feathering. create the different values. All right, so this is coming along. I could, I could kind of see this now. I love that this character is so burly and he's so aggro looking. Oh, I messed up. Wait, did I mess up? Yeah, shoot, I messed up. Um, let's try to salvage it. I colored in somewhere where I wasn't supposed to. But I think that it's not going to be detrimental in the long run. There's enough going on here where it's going to distract from that. Did I mess up again? No, okay. Okay, so this, his head's clearly starting to stick out from the rest of his torso with this being darker and having a lot more black in it. The tricky part for me now is how am I going to render out the hands because I got to make sure that this hand's really coming at you and if I render it out the same way I did this, all of a sudden it, it puts it on the same plane as, as this.
Okay, so there's that. Um, all right, let's come in now and start adding some of the shading. So as you can see here, this is clearly lit from underneath. You can see the the peak is going to be the darker spot, whereas um, when the light's coming up, it's going to start forming where it's convexing the muscle. Yeah. Okay. This is working for me. So I'm. I think it'll really work out once I finish this area here. But yeah, right now, in terms of establishing shade and some volume and depth, it's starting to come together. I'm going to kind of be careful what I do here, because I kind of want to leave this rim lit. Yeah, this guy's looking gnarly. He looks like something out of hell. Some sort of crazed, like, demon, Balrog or something. I really wish, I mean, I think that's one reason why I'm drawn to like characters like Venom a lot is I, I love rendering out black, dark costumes. And if this dude was all dark like this, you know, for me, I'd, I'd be in heaven because I love just creating all these darker masses and this kind of texture and musculature and giving a sense of depth and shadow. For me, that's like my favorite part of doing some of these drawings. When I was younger in high school, um, Marvel Comics, they used to put out this publication, this one comic book. It wasn't necessarily a comic book as it was more so, I think, more of like a, like a, a almost like a fanzine. Whereas this a, is a book, it was a comic book, but it was, there weren't like necessarily stories in it. It was more about um, a lot of fan service and editorial stuff and just talking about books, hyping up books, maybe to be interviews with artists. And in Marvel Age, one section of the comic was always uh, kind of like an artist review and critique. Like aspiring comic book artists would submit their work. And then they'd have like famous uh, comic book editors or I think other artists evaluate, um, you know, this, this up and coming talent or people that wanted to break into the industry. And I remember always looking through that and seeing other people's work, other aspiring artists' work, and you know, I'd always try to measure myself up to them. It's like, you know, you're the art amateur artist, and I want to be a comic book artist. You know, what level are they at? 
and then I'd read what the critiques were and how the these editors and other artists would view their work and suggest you know where their strengths and weaknesses are and I remember some of them being so unforgiving sometimes you know but that's the way we can get better is if you, you know your if your weak points are kind of pointed out so you know what you, what needs improvement and uh, one of the editors that would sometimes review uh, the fan submitted artwork was a guy named Mark Gruenwald um, he passed away I think back in uh, the early 2000s maybe uh, 2002 I think well I met him at a convention um, it might have been the Chicago Comic Con and this was maybe circa 1991 or, nine, or 93, somewhere in between there. And then he was at the Marvel table, and I brought my portfolio up to him. And I remember I was just kind of nervous because I'm like, God, I've read this guy's um, critiques and other artists. And he, he was kind of, not that he was harsh on them, but he wasn't always flower, you know, all flowers and roses and stuff. He'd really tell them how, what, how it was. And I remember when I showed him my artwork, I was probably about 14 or 15 at the time. I remember he was just kind of floored and impressed because I think I was so young and I kind of had a certain level of talent that for, for my age. Because, I mean, that's all I did when I was younger. I didn't really go out. You know, in high school, I wasn't in sports or anything. So after school, after I was done with done my homework, I'd just sit down and just draw. I'd doodle during class. And cause that's all I wanted to be when I was younger was a comic book artist. And I remember him just telling me that he'd look at my, my work and the thing that he liked a lot was just my ink work. He said I had a very, not I'm, not that I'm saying my, ink, my inking's perfect, you know, it's very, very far from it. But I just remember him saying that um, I had a very lively ink line and he liked that a lot. You know, it had a lot of energy and character to it. And I was, you know, I was kind of kept that in the back of my head. And for me, hearing those words from a you know, higher up at Marvel Comics was such a big deal for me. And he was kind of like one of my, you know, driving motivators. Like every time I'd work on something, I kind of remember, you know, that positive vibe he gave me and the encouragement. And that it, it always kind of carried th throughout. And I remember being, you know, being kind of sad when he passed away because I met a lot of comic book artists and writers and sometimes, and, you know, some of them are really cool and, you know, some could be kind of like, indifferent and a couple could be jerks but it was just so nice that you know here i was a 14 year old wanted to be a comic book artist and this guy was so encouraging and he you know he point rather than you know point out where i was weak he just kind of like pointed out okay these are our strengths you know run with it and that's what i kind of always did all right so we have this part of his torso done and it looks good there's nice clear separation here so now let's work on uh, these shoulder pad deals. Now, these shoulder pads, here on the toy, they're gray, and its horns are white. So I think it's okay if I kind of go with the same kind of route I went with the way I rendered these out. It's not going to hurt it at all. I mean, it might blend in a little with the head, but at this point, I'm not too concerned because I, for me, the tension needs to be drawn on the character's eyes and mouth and i think you're kind of getting that here with this black and the, these darker areas here starts framing this area All right, this works. I kind of wish I could take a, um, if I had an opaque, white opaque pen or like even white opaque paint, I think I'd try creating a halo with a thin white line that'd surround the head just to give this even more pop. If I, if I go back and do this drawing digitally, if I color it digitally, I might do that. But if that makes any sense, because I think when you add a white line here, it'll give it a, even a thin one, it'd make the head pop out just a little bit more. So I kind of want the head to kind of just like scream and shoot out at you a little.
right, let's figure out where some of these details are. All right, so this if the, if the light's coming from underneath here, I think you'd see I think the front of this spike would be lit, but then the sides would be kind of falling back into sh shadow. So I'm going to try to do that here. Cuz at first I was contemplating this um lighting this from the bottom so it'd be kind of like how the teeth are, but I don't think that's the case. I think part of this might go in the shadow a little bit. Okay, that's all right. It's not perfect, but I think it gets the point kind of across. And I could do the same for the knee here. No, wait, no, I take it back. The knee could actually be, be rendered out more like this. So I'm looking at this guy here. And these knees are the same color as this. So I, I could go with that darker kind of texture and musculature here. I'm going to think that maybe this part of the knee is falling a little bit more into shadow. So I might make one end a little bit darker than the other. I don't know if I could get that right across, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, something like that. And I'll come in and darken that. I'm using a new Sharpie marker here, and I want the tip to last a little bit longer, so I'm not going to go crazy with it like I sometimes do. It's, right, it's looking alright. It's not my best drawing, but I'm happy with it so far. It's very rarely that I'll... I mean, when I was younger, I used to invest like a weekend in just, in just one drawing, but... Now that I'm older, it's like time's like the most precious commodity for me, and I like to I like to finish my illustrations like in one sitting. You know, I might come back later to make refinements, but if I could hammer something out in one sitting, I'm I'm content. But I, I do like the drawings a lot more uh, when I invest a lot of time into it. All my best illustrations are the ones where I'll put a lot of man uh, a lot of hours into it. Um, you know, really devote my time. I think the more man hours you put into something, the better it'll come out. But, you know, I don't always have that luxury. Okay, it's coming along. 
coming along. All right, I, I want to take a different approach altogether for the rest for the rest of them. This, this is gonna be kind of a gamble. I think this is where I'm either gonna make or break the drawing. do this okay I had a book from, I think it might have been from the um, early or mid 80s, and it was on inking technique using like, um, I think like Krauko pens and brushes or even technical pens. And there were certain rendering styles. It's, I mean, if you saw it, it just screamed like 80s and 70 technique, but I think it's kind of relevant, at least for me, anyways, in the way I draw. So, what I'm doing here, I think it's a very kind of Maybe 70s or 80s approach. Like if you look in old magazines, uh, especially in advertising, there there were a lot of advertisements that were not necessarily using photography. Is a lot of illustration, and that was a time. There was a time period where uh, art students could actually like go to art school and major in illustration, and they'd learn how to do stuff by hand. I mean, granted, you could do that nowadays, but I think it's more so. It's all digital. But back then, you could actually major in illustration. And I remember when I went to school, in art school in the late 90s, it was kind of rare that we had a couple of students that were coming in as illustration majors because at that point in time, it was the shift was being made to, um, you know, we weren't working analog anymore. There was a big um, demand for people that work digitally. And I remember some of my classmates, they were like brilliant illustrators. But they were, you know, during that time they had um learn and shift over from using analog tools like paints and inks and stuff and learn how to work on a mac and understand how to operate photoshop yeah i like how, i like this here i think there's a definite change in texture between this and that This is such a cool looking character. And let's do the same for here.
yeah, this drawing is coming out. Um, it's coming out a lot better than I thought it, it would. It's not perfect, but I had I I, I don't know. I still kind of have some reservations about what I'm doing as I'm drawing this, but as I'm changing up the textures, I think that's really uh, helping me um, trying to find a little bit more balance and harmony with this composition. Trying to figure out how to make different lines work, how to contrast the different textures, trying to figure out where the values and the light and shading is. Yeah, this guy's looking neat. I mean, it's, unless you're familiar with this this line of Transformers to begin with, it, it's, you know, if someone saw this, they wouldn't think it's a Transformer character. It's like this is a character that rose from the depths of hell. Look at that. Woo! It's one vicious, angry-looking dude. Now this is going to be my longest video yet, and that's all right. I'm not, I'm not racing to complete these like within an hour like before. I think now the the norm might be if a drawing's taking longer than what I expect, I might just pause it like I did for this one and come back to it later. So uh, it won't it won't be um, unusual for my future videos to have like small little cuts and breaks in them. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this a lot. I think this looks great. This contrasting with the rest of the... So I have like three different textures going on. I kind of have what's going on with the skull and the horns. That's like a more rough, gritty, rocky almost kind of texture. I kind of have a different texture going on with the upper torso. It's almost like a dark... Not not necessarily leathery because it's there's no real sheen to it, but you could tell it's a little bit darker. It's um, a lot more rough around the edges but there's enough contr dark contrast going on here where it's just gonna like you know make everything else separate from each other okay that looks decent and let's recreate that for the rest here and then we'll work on his hands
one thing that gives it away that I was kind of a a child of the 90s reading comic books is because <laughs> the amount of line work that I put into stuff it was almost like a competition for artists back in the 90s to like see how much cross hatching and line work they could throw in all their inking I think it made the work look really great back then but it kind of dates you know the art style but for me it's just you know it's how I grew up and that's how I learned how to draw it's a lot different nowadays everyone works digitally or a lot of people work digitally and almost the role of a comic book inker is almost obsolete because the penciler nowadays I mean they don't even use real pencils they could recreate the effects of ink um, in the computer in, in the computer software so if they're working like in um, Photoshop or Procreate or Manga Studio there's tools available at their disposal where they can easily recreate um, the illusion of stuff being inked with an actual like pen and ink um, marker or recreate India ink or just whatever and it's cool that you know all that's available but and I, th I think the, the work that people are putting out nowadays the quality is just so high but it, I think you you move the role of the inker and I think at a certain point too it's gonna get to the point where you know we, we, the comic book industry might not even need colorists because it'll, it'll just be like an all-in-one artist it'll be the dude that pencils it it'll be the dude that, that inks it and he'll color it all himself just because he's using digital tools and you see a lot of that now too I think with some indie books especially people that are self-publishing a lot of people that are jacks of all trades When I was um, self-publishing my own comic books, I learned how to... One, one, one of the tasks I learned that I kind of enjoyed a lot was uh, learning how to letter a comic book digitally. I learned how to do that in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. And that was cool because I learned how to work those kind of programs when I was uh, studying art in college. So for me, it was really neat to be able to take what I learned in school and apply it in you know drawing comic books which is my one of my big passions when I was uh, much younger Yeah, the question now about what I'm going to do for the hands is kind of bothering me. I'm looking at this and I'm like, everything seems to flow, but what do I do about the hands? Now, the hands on the toy are colored the same as these shoulder pads. And theoretically, I could come in and render them out similar as this, but I'm just worried that I run the risk of just all of a sudden, eh, everything gets flattened out. Uh... Let's, let's break it up a little bit by trying to add some finer details.
okay that helps a little bit I don't think that helps enough All right, that's working a little bit. So what I did then just now is I kind of added a couple of just details to it just to break it up from the rest of the drawing. I mean, it's, it's giving it somewhat a little bit of different texture, um, different presence to it. And... Uh, I think I, add, I could add a little bit of rendering here without making it look, without losing it too much in the rest of the drawing. And so let's experiment with that here in this hand. I think if I could pull it off in this hand, the rest of the drawing will follow. And right now I have a time limit too. I need to take off in about 15 minutes. So if I, I could finish this in 15 minutes. Cool. Alright, I think that's working a little bit. I'm not gonna get too carried away because I don't want to. It's like I said, I don't want to flatten this out, but I want to make it look different enough than what it is right now. Alright, this isn't bad. I can live with that. I don't need to get carried away. It just has to look alright. Um, Okay, there's a part of me that's telling me I, I need to stop what I'm doing on the hand and uh, all right, let's stop here with the hand and let's, let's take a gamble. I'm gonna take a gamble. I'm gonna heavyweight this hand at least up here. I want this to like really come at you. So I'm gonna come back and give the line weight, make it twice as thick as the, as what it was, and hopefully they'll come out and read better. I'm just kind of hoping that your eye will make sense of it, and they'll send the signal to your brain, and your brain will process it differently and go, "Oh, this is this is a heavier line."
All right, this is the, yeah, this is working. All right, I was kind of worried at first, but I'm looking at it through the camera, and it looks like it's coming out all right. And let's get this part of the hand a little bit fatter. The line work. Okay, it's working. All right, I have 10 minutes to spare. Let's, let's kind of wrap this guy up. Okay, yeah. So I mentioned before, this guy's being lit from underneath. So let's, let's give him a... Let's kind of theater light him. Or opposite theater light him and... Uh, Okay, where's my marker? No. All right, so as I'm approaching the end of this drawing, I just want to thank you for sticking around a little bit longer with this one. Um, if you find the videos to be a little too long, you know, <laughs> this, this stop, I'm going to come back to them later or something. But if you sit through this whole thing, that's great. You know, order a pizza and just, I don't know, veg out or something. God, I love how this guy looks. He's such a crazy looking monster. I'd love to see this on like on a t-shirt or like a skateboard graphic or something. I think for one of the drawings I did, I was, I was around these markers for so long. Man, they gave me a headache. I need to like <laughs> work at like where there's open ventilation. The fumes from these markers, I hope they're not toxic. That would suck if they're toxic. But man, after smelling these markers for so long, it's like, give me some fresh air, please. Yeah, overall I'm happy with this. This looks <laughs> this looks a lot better than I kind of saw in my head. I was I was so worried. I think that one point where I'm like, I need to take a break and get some fresh eyes on this. I think honestly that was just me being worried, being nervous. I'm like, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do with this drawing. I don't know what kind of art style I want to commit to this. It's the character's a little bit larger than I was kind of hoping to draw. And then I kind of knew looking at it, I'm like, this is gonna take a lot longer than an hour to fill out. Mostly because it's not like I'm just drawing a portrait like most of my drawings where I'm just focusing on like the head, which is easy to draw, or the face. But once I start drawing the rest of the body, there's there's so many different elements in play and so many things to consider. And, you know, how am I going to make this drawing work?
Man, that looks wild. I should really just draw monsters. I love drawing monsters. <laughs> They're so fun to draw. I don't have to worry about making them look realistic. I get to play around with them a little. They don't have to have perfect facial features or the right proportions. They're just, everything's exaggerated. Everything's lit darker. They're grittier looking. They have crazy teeth, big eyes. So yeah, this is my Transformer Skullgren. Um, you know, if, if you fall asleep during this video, I'm glad you got some rest. Because <laughs> these videos, they're just long, but... I never intended when I first started doing this to draw these long videos. But I like how this looks. It came out alright. Um, so we started off with this guy here. Good old Skullgren. And then we transposed them to a 2D media on the paper. And he looks like this. Pretty badass looking dude, if I do say so myself. Alright, so once again, uh, my name is Lou. And it's the 18th of March. Thank you again for dropping by. I greatly appreciate it. Um, means a lot to me that you put the time in to just watch these. So I hope you get something out of this. I mean, I get a lot out of doing this and sharing it with people. So take care and I'll talk to you later. Peace out.